Welcome, welcome to the Hoop and the Harm. I am your host, Ethan Zillner. I'm also here with my co-host, Elvin Mims. And today, we're going to talk about and do a preview for Game 3 of the NBA Finals and who we think our early Finals MVP are. And yeah, so what's going on, E? How you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. I have a lot of fun that day. What did, you, uh, what did you like from last night's game? What did you see? What did you, what did you not like? Um, it's kind of one-sided right now, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's one Kevin, Kevin series. Durant, he's, he's playing like a man on the floor. It's like, a, you know, even, you know, with LeBron guarding him, I think that's a big challenge, and he's starting to expose it a little bit. Um, just looking at different things, you see LeBron is, he's kind of lacking on the one-on-one matchups. He's a good off-ball defender, filling that passing lane, but you see him one-on-one, the mano-a-mano, just he's getting exposed. Chest chest, he's getting exposed, man. Well, could that be because they're just saying, hey, we're going to take it to Tristan Thompson, we're going to challenge him, or is in Kevin Love too? Because Kevin Love's not really been known for shot blocking. Tristan Thompson, he can contest. That's what he's good for, contesting. Yeah, he's a good contester. I've never known him to be a big not a shot blocker. I've never seen him be good. just scrapping or rebounding. But yeah, he's a good glue guy, dirty work. Yeah, man, it's, this is boiling down to just man-to-man, individual defense, and Okay, and if you hear people saying Cleveland's getting old, and I use air quotes when I say that, is that an ignorant thing to say, or what do you think? I mean, they say they're getting old. So, but you got Richard Jefferson and Kyle Corbett, two best players, like the oldest player. 35 and 35. And like 36 or something like that. So, I mean, when you look at that starting lineup, you got Kyrie, who's, what, 24? 3, 24, 24, yeah. LeBron's 32. 25. Um, Kevin Love's, what, 27? Yep. Something right. like that. They are still trying to put 30, 31, and then you got Tristan Thompson, who's 26 or 27. Something so the like starting that. lineup's not that old. It's not old. I mean, but... See, I, this is where it comes back to, I think they should have kept Andrew Wiggins. I think, personally, Andrew Wiggins would have been nice to keep around. I think Andrew Wiggins, under LeBron's tutelage, would have been perfect for this time right now, when LeBron is kind of not showing his age, but when he needs... That extra element, because in my opinion, <clears throat> if they would have just towed the line and held out, I think Kevin Love was going to come there eventually, or they could have found someone around that caliber, for instance, Lamarcus Aldridge. Uh, that's my opinion. But hindsight's 2020. When you have Kevin Love on the table and you want LeBron James, best player in the world at the time, and still arguably could be now, you have him saying, well, I need someone to play with. I need a big. I like, I like playing with Chris Bosh in Miami. I need someone like that. You go and get it. It did work. They got a championship out of it. Because Kevin Love, he can spread the floor all the way out to the He's no slouch. 19 and 11. That was what he averaged this year. He's no slouch at all. But, you know, with the whole keeping Andrew Wiggins thing, it's kind of a... It's it's kind of a back-and-forth situation, right? Because you can sit there and you can see it from your point of view and say, you know what, this kid got tremendous upside. I think he can help LeBron LeBron James James down the stretch. But, you know, in hindsight, you've had so many people that had upside... And just turn out to be absolutely nothing, right? And so <laughs> you turn around and that happens. So you're like, okay, do I get this rookie that we just drafted that we had, you know, all the West, all the you know, the hopes yeah. for? And then LeBron announces he's coming back. And then you have a young Kevin Love who's an all star who's proven to legit carry he's a team. Like yeah, five and twelve. With yeah, Minnesota, with Minnesota. Minnesota. wasn't winning much, yeah. but still. So I mean, that's just me personally. I don't think it was a bad move. You know, but you know, it's it's one of those things that'll go back and forth. Some people be like they should have kept them. Some people be like, hey, that's a good move, right? Well, I want to get your opinion on something quick here. So I see this thing going around on uh, the old internet, and uh, what it says, what it is, is it's saying how it's taking um, Golden State three players averaging 20 plus points a game, one Defensive Player of the Year candidate, two MVP winners back to back, and they're saying. It, this is what it's taking to beat a 32 year 32 year old LeBron James. And what my what I'm trying to say is the Cavs have Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving who are averaging 20 and Kevin Love is 19 and 11, Kyrie Irving 25 and 6. Like I don't know, that's still pretty good. I know Kevin Durant is a big linchpin for Golden State, but still. Yeah, because you, I mean, you ask yourself if, if they don't have Kevin Durant, they were still there last year. They were still there, but are they making this this? impact like they are now, you know what I'm saying, like, that, that's a lot of firepower, you know, still a lot of firepower, yeah. four, you got four all-stars, I mean, Sean Brandon, Livingston, though, that's yeah, the, Brandon like Brandon. you said, we were talking about last time, Sean Livingston is just the solid, perfect guy for them, because he had, yeah. like, 10 points, four, seven, 
doesn't shoot the three, but he doesn't need to because he's just he plays within himself. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, um, I've always liked the way he played. You know, I've always been real keen on the. It was just really unfortunate what happened with him with the Clippers, I believe. Yeah, with his mid range game and that, that mid range game is like a lost art in basketball in general. It's either you know shoot the three or in the paint dunking on people. It's, you really rarely have people that can just come in and immediately just like knock down the mid range. And well, it's underrated it. to say the least. Yeah, and I don't understand it because I mean you know you look at it, Jordan. Yeah, he can shoot the Kobe. three. He can go in the back and finish, but there was killers in the mid range. You had Kobe the same way. Sam Cassell was like that. But Richard Hamilton was like that. You know, you got a lot of people that like just Richard literally, Hamilton, that that literally killed people. Richard Hamilton, like he he played off the of screens in the mid range, like Reggie Miller and Ray Allen played off yep. um, off screens in the three. Yep. You know, and that's like it's a killer because you can you can do so much, right? You get somebody in the mid range, they can pump, take one dribble, they have point. You know, at the point to attack the rim, they can pass the ball. It's just it's it's that common medium right there in the middle that can just like really kill the defense. You know, I just don't understand why so a lot of people just gone away from it. Well, Kobe and Michael Jordan could still knock down threes. Yeah. It wasn't their bread and butter. Uh, I think <clears> personally, <throat> the mid range game needs to be brought back. Just players don't like it because they see the analytics and they see all these things on 2K going, oh, it's a better higher percentage if you just shoot the three. And then you start seeing guys like Ryan Anderson in Houston doing a pull-up three on four-on-one. You're going, okay, that's not technical. I mean, it's just some guy that sat down and, and threw together these numbers and was like, oh, you know, statistically, if you shoot X amount of threes, then you're going to win This is game. the best spot. Yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, you know, I mean, that's going to – you're getting three points, right? So, for you know, you think about it for every one three – you gotta hit two twos. You know, well, my like, question I mean, to you is this: When you see analytics as a player, and you have like a GM or someone in the higher up office come to you guys and say, "Hey, you know, we, we're gonna this year we're gonna try and we're gonna try and have you kind of shoot more threes, and on the baseline three is a lot more of a higher percentage shot compared to a layup." What do you guys say to that? Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you still have to play, right? I mean, you can you can flirt with things, you can play around with them, but. You still have to have an identity. You still have to have a bread and butter that you go to. And, and I've just never been a fan. Yeah, you can shoot the three. You can knock it down. If you have a, a, a good player or two that's able to go in and, and when you just hit knock, down, in the game, yeah, it looks good. knock down threes or whatnot, then that's, that's, that's great. But, you know, like you said, you're not going to hit those, those 22 and stuff. You look at a game and you lose by five or six points, but you don't win 10 for 40. From the three, you get what I'm saying. Well, like you it, think out of those shots, you could have drawn yeah, something a little bit. I mean, there. because it's, it's percentage, right? Like uh, you think about it, that's just what it is. The closer you get to the basket, the higher percentage. You know, you're, you're most likely to shoot. So, you know what's wrong with you know pump fake and taking a couple of dribbles in. You know, if a dude do a flyby like we talked about last time, a flyby contest, you take a couple of dribbles in. Somebody has to commit to you, or you Someone's have a mid range. Right. Yeah, Somebody commit gaps. to you you're right there. You know, like I mean. Take by any means, take the three if you want, if you're open, if it's there. But, you know, just to come down and slowly try to run offense is just with three-point shots. You know, I, I'm just not a fan of that at all. So then if you're if you're the veteran on Golden State, let's say you're there now. You're, you're, you're Richard Jefferson, for instance, and then you're Sean Livingston in Golden State. What are you saying going into game three? What are you saying on the plane ride home? Like, what are you doing to keep everyone's spirits up in Cleveland? And what are you doing to keep everyone's killer instinct in Golden State? Well, in Golden State, you know. Is it easier to is it easier to keep going with the winning side? Well, it's always easier to go with that, right? It's always, I mean, because you look at it and it's not, we have, you know, 30 more games. We got 40 more games. It's always, you know, you look at it potentially. If Cleveland don't bring it, they can be done with these two games. So if, if I'm going to go to the state, I'm like, look. We go into their house, we know it's going to be a dog fight. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to be that. Let's not get knocked on our heels. Let's, let's not be caught off guard. Let's come in and we're going to go let's punch. Play our game. Yeah, let's play our game. We're going to go punch for punch, and we're going to see what happens at the end. You Keep know? it within five. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're Cleveland, man, like you're having to tell these guys, don't think just because we're going home that that's going to guarantee us a win. Don't expect the Just because last year either. we came back from a 3-1 or whatnot, we're going to do it this, this is year. A different, yeah, this different is a different series. It's a different I mean, it, it could go either way, right? But, you know, you can't say, hey, we lost. We're down 0-2 and it's over. Like, that mentality will kill a locker room kill the body, the kill the chemistry on the court and everything. You go in and you still play like you're up to, you know, and going home. But 
you don't want to go in and figure, okay, well, okay, you know, we didn't get two in, in Golden State, so we're going to go home. We're just going to take these two. So I kind of how do you keep it on the plane then? Like, how do you keep it? If, let's say you see a younger guy. Well, there's not really any younger guys. But let's say you see a guy like Darren Williams or something kind of down in the dumps a bit or see some players. You see that the morale's a little lower. What do you do? Uh, I, like me, as a vet, if I see that, um, it's, it'll kind of get under my skin a little bit. How do you approach it? Is little what I'm stuff, trying to say yeah, too. Little stuff like that can carry over into the game. You know, because now you feel sorry for yourself. You know, and that's in your head, yeah. Yeah, and that's in your head. Um, if I'm a vet, like I'm, I'm not asking. You know, I'm, I've never been one to try to put people on in the front side. of everyone. Or I've never been one to put people. If I see multiple people doing that, then yeah, I, I address it as a group. Or if, if he's I a see, guy that's known to yeah, be able to see, take yeah, it like that. Yeah, if I see one or two, you know, I pull them to the side, like you know. Young brother, what's going on? You know, what is this and that? Look, this is what you need to do. This is how we're going to go about it, and we're going to go out here and we're going to play this game. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think at this point, at this level, you shouldn't really see. I mean, nobody likes losing, especially when you get this far. And it's on this stage, yeah. Yeah, and it's on this stage. Nobody likes losing, but you still can't, you know, sit down and start feeling sorry for yourself because you went and you, you know, lost two games, you know, by a margin like 40 some points. I mean, but still, I mean, it's, I mean, what's new? You know, you just did it to people three rounds previous to that, you know, sweeping, beating them by 20, sweeping people and stuff like that. You know, it's just one of them things where they say, you know, find that fun when the rabbit got the gun, right? So it's just, now it's just, you got to just man up, no time to feel sorry for yourself and go So that's what you try to do with a guy like Derek Williams, for instance, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but at that point, though, that, as a professional, though, it's like, have to like as crazy as it seems you know if, if you go out and you get swept feel sorry for yourself later not in the heat of battle yeah, we got you know what I'm saying? not in july the, yeah not in the heat of battle you know what i'm saying and even once you know it's over win lose or draw you know you bask in that moment for a while and then it's back to the back to the lab you know? and when you talk to when you talk to Derek williams let's say because we'll use him as a bit of a focal point because he's got limited playoff experience do you say Look, young fellow, when you go out there and with Derek Willi- or Darren Williams too, do you say to him, "Look, play within your role. Don't try to be the superhero. We don't need a superhero. We need people to just play a solid game." Yeah, like you tell them, what you've been doing this, this season or since you got here, go out and do that now. Like we don't need, like you said, we're not going to. If we're down, you know, six points, eight points. Look, we're not swinging for the fence. We're not going to get six or eight points back with one shot. We're going to chip. We're going to chip. We're going to chip. We're going to grab the momentum and try to make it work. Um, but I'm, I'm telling them, look, what you bring to this team, you know. You know exactly what you bring to this team. So, you know, go out and do it. You know, and at the end of the day, you look out, like I said, win, lose, or draw. You can say, you know what, I gave my all. I did my job. I did what I was supposed to do, you know, and, and it just didn't work out. But, I mean, to go in, you know, I think it'll kind of piss me off a little more to see a guy come in and just, you know, try to, you know, up in his jersey and got an S on his chest and all of a sudden he's going to take over the game and stuff like that. I mean, the NBA players, and at any given point, one of them can just step in and, and catch fire. They are high-level athletes. Yeah, they can catch fire. It can happen, but I, the eyes Make sure it happens happen within your game within first. Within your game, yeah. And, you know, that's... Um, so my question next would be, what do you do for the Golden State Warriors with um, trying to close it out and... Do you try to – okay, because they're good at shooting threes. So do you go in there and try and hit some bombs right away, or do you go in there and just try and attack the basket first? Like, what do you do in an away game, playoff game, in a big situation in the finals? Like, how do you – what do you do? You don't change the situation much? No, you play your game. I mean, then when it's all said and done, you know, the hoop for 10 feet, the three-point three point line at the same distance, you know, what fans are different, the court is, color is different. Your jersey is different. That's it. You know, so you play with the. You system. don't really pay attention to the crowd much, do you? You know, or, I mean, once you get to that point, you know, you just you're you so can't. zoned in. You can't. You know, you, you really can't. Like, but you're so zoned in to, especially now, you're so zoned in to the task at hand. To, I'm not worried about what celebrity is sitting here or what somebody screaming right here. And, That's for the regular know, season. That, it doesn't bother. Not even for the regular season. No, it shouldn't bother you. Like, not at all. You have a job to do, right? It's. it's it's, it's no, and that's how you always yeah, approach it's it. It's yeah. no different. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you are, you know, if you, if you're a cop and you pull somebody over and you're writing them a ticket just because people ride by in the car and tell you how much you suck and all that, you're not going to just stop writing a ticket. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to face you. You're going to still do your job. That's just how it is, you know? 
it's, it's the people. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a job. You're paid to come out and you're paid to win. You know, and once you get in that situation on the on the road and at home, you know, you, you have to take care of business. And like if I'm Golden State, I'm going there and I'm like, fellas, look, we doing what got us here. You yeah. know, if if the shots there, you know Steph Curry's gonna he's gonna take big shots, he's gonna make him miss big shots, you know, the Levon shots, that's that's how he's always played, right? When it's when they're going in, all great, but when he miss a few of them, you know people are like, Oh man, he shouldn't have took it, but that's just the nature of it. But so would, it would be it. fair to say Cleveland might take one, though? They have, like, they have to. I think they'll yeah, take one. They have to. Right? But what do you see the series ending in? The way it's going now, man, I see it going six. Maybe six. Okay, that's yeah, fair. Because, yeah, you don't point. want to count Cleveland out because they did get there for a reason. Yeah. They're a very strong team. I Yeah, I'm thinking five or six. I think they can probably take one of them at home. Send the game, send it back to Golden State. Possibly take one there, you know, and you know, I think you know. Anything they, is really possible. I mean, if 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 Cleveland starts hitting some shots and they start falling down, it can be a different game. Yeah. That is true. I mean, because you think about it now. I mean, if you watch basketball on a high school level or even like a collegiate level, you'll see teams like just come in and be like, "There's no way that this team is going to win this game," and then they come out and just like beat the other team to death. It's because they start feeling good, right? True. Um, and that's what I was telling the guy this with the whole Raptors and the Bucks, right? People are oh, they going to beat the Bucks. The Bucks have no playoff experience. I'm like, but they're young. They have athletes. They have guys that can play. They know who their floor general is. They're going to play through them. They got a good coach. And then once they started playing, I'm like, yo, like, these young fellas are feeling good. You know, like, so Toronto has got a battle on their hand. Now they starting to let these young guys, you know, despite the playoffs, yeah. they're starting to feel good. So can you imagine what it's like if, if Cleveland get out there and they get in the groove and they just start feeling good. You so know, it's, it's all it takes, eh? Yeah, that's all it takes. And now you, just, it depends on how, after that happens, how does Golden State react to it, you know? You know, do they get hit in the mouth and then they just, like, sit in there stunned and it's just, like, boom, a beat down? Do they get hit like that and then they think, at first they start thinking and they hear this 3-1 from last year and all that, you know? So it can go. It can go both ways easy. Kevin Durant, your early MVP, he's mine. Right yeah, now. I got him. I got him. Right Steph now. Curry's triple double. What do you think of that? I mean, the, the, the triple double. I mean, but I don't. I don't. <laughs> like, I, I, you can't take. I mean, what thirty, thirty, what thirty-eight? The first game, thirty-three. This one. Yeah. And, you know, and double digit rebounds on this one. He had like six, seven assists. And um, five blocks. Yeah. yeah. Like so. I mean. By far. Steph Curry did have eight turnovers. That's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. You were saying last time, just after we were done recording, something about <laughs> LeBron and Jordan. Why do we need to stop comparing them? What's your opinion on that? We're gonna segue uh, here a little. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a terrible comparison. And and due to the fact, I don't know if you've seen this interview with Scottie Pippen, but he hit the nail on the head. He was like, they are two different style players. And Very you know, true. Having said that, the Jordan and the Kobe comparisons, okay, you know, like we could, we could, we could go back. That's a fair and forth comparison, about that yes. But with LeBron to try to compare him with Jordan, it's, it's, it's nowhere you can't do that. If I had to say, I would say he's a more physically dominant and more Scotty Pippen type. I think. I think Magic Johnson because he's true, more of a player, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If you like, like Pippen said, if you gave LeBron the basketball when he crossed half court, he's looking to facilitate. He's he looking can, to yeah, make stuff happen. Right when you get Jordan and Kobe the ball, when they cross half court, they think of score. Like I'm going into the killers that way. Yeah. yeah, like that's what I, I tell them. Like it's, it's it's like this. If you take two assassins, right? One's good with a gun. One's good with a knife. You can't discredit the other one just because they do it a different way. Because at the end of the day, the job is done. Whoever their target is <laughs> is dead. You get what I'm saying? True. So that's the same thing. Like I just hate, you know, and this it's. it's I hate that right now you can't really fault because right now in the younger area, in the younger era, like LeBron is like their Jordan. The K, you know what I'm Which saying? is a fair comparison because he is a dominant yeah. player. He's like, when they look, he's the one that's been to all the finals. You know, he's the one that, you know, is one or whatnot. But like I said, I've watched, you know, so I've watched Jordan play. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, the flu game. You know, saying True. like you got players now sitting out, uh, you know, I'm tired. I need rest. I'm like, you know, we watched this dude play 
I, I, like it was half dead on the court, still half hurt. And, you know, um, you just you see it happen. I mean, even if you look back with Isaiah Thomas with the Pistons, you know, they play the Lakers and he messed his link up and finished that game. Like, that. like, yeah, it was it was like terrible. But like I said, it's just I hate when people get into that debate because I'm like, I don't care what you say, you can't discredit anything that Jordan's done for the game of basketball just because somebody. I mean, that's it's gonna happen, right? Like. If you look at the Bulls, the 72 and 10 Bulls, right? They was on this record and never be broken, and it took 20 years. To Technically not broken, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, but I'm saying, and then another team came by and went, you know, mm-hmm. 73 and 9. So, of course, somebody's going to always come along that's going to do something a little better, but you can't discredit or try to say, oh, he's better than. Because if I think if the game was as physical now, you get hand it was back there, because you got to think that's what Jordan was playing through hand check. We were saying Kurt Rand was kind of hammered. Through, like the game was so physical back then, so like now you have guys that you know don't you look even, at him, you look at them wrong. Yeah, you, like you really have to put in a in a rule that start fining people for flopping. Like yeah. come on, man. Like yeah, that's you bad. know what? It's getting out of control. We're gonna start finding you for flopping. And come on, man. So now guys just figure like. <laughs> You know, if it's not going my way, or if a guy's stronger than me or something, I'm just gonna like flop and the ref going to Wilson reward and stuff. You know, and it's just like, yeah, no, that's not fair at all. Tracy McGrady was saying how LeBron's a better solid all-around player, but like you were just saying, LeBron is an all-around player. Michael Jordan was very good. He was, a, he's, you could say technically all-around, but his main bread and butter was killing you on the offensive end. That's what he would do is get you that way, right? Yeah, but he was also on like a all defense things as well. That's true. I mean, but you look at LeBron now, you can give him the ball, and I mean, it's proven he can go out and get you 40. You know, he can go true. out and get you, you know, 35, 15, but, you know, he can pass the ball. You know, he, he commands so much attention when he has the ball because he can get guys good looks and his, his court vision and, and stuff like that is, is remarkable. Like, I'm not going to take that from him at all. But everybody has what they bring to the team. And with that Bulls team, like Jordan was the score. Like they Yeah, won. and the Bulls had less to be honest. I think that seventy two and ten team deserves more credit than the seventy three and nine team. So in my opinion. If you look at them right now, they're trying to say they trying to say like this right here. If you was to go tip for tap, right? If with, let's say with the Cavs right now, you would say LeBron, Jordan. Or we'll say LeBron Pippen. Mm-hmm. Kyrie, Jordan, Kyrie Pippen, like as far as like status on the court. You know, that's what you would say. And then you'll turn around and you would say Tristan Thompson or Draymond Green or Dennis Rodman. That's it. Like, and then Luke Longley's going to get exposed, in my opinion. But the thing about it, like, what do you Dennis think? Rodman wasn't even a scorer, though. You get what I'm saying? I like, know. He was just a gritty player. He's going to get every rebound. He's going to guard your best. He's a better version of Tristan Thompson because he could defend the perimeter. He's going to guard your biggest post player. And he could guard a point guard, too. He's, he's going to come switch. down. Yeah, like, that's what he did. Like, he would guard Shaq. Dennis Rodman was only, like, 6'7". You know what I'm saying? He was aggressive, like, though. Yeah. He was good. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you can't try to say, oh, well, the Bulls had this, the Bulls had that. Well, the Bulls didn't have three or four All-Stars. Okay, yeah, I'm going to break down the All-Stars quickly here. Uh, for LeBron's side, he had Mo Williams with one All-Star. We got Kyrie Irving, he's got four. Kevin Love's got four. Zadrinus Ogalskis has got two. Chris Bosh has got 11. And we're going to come back to that number for a second. Wade. Dwayne Wade's got 12. And now former All-Stars, Ray Allen had 10. Rashard Lewis had two. Darren Williams has got three. Kyle Korver's got one. Now, for Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen's got seven. Horace Grant had one. That wasn't with the Bulls, though. That was with Orlando. Rodman had two with the Pistons. And George Gervin technically had one in his last year with Michael Jordan, his first year with him, but he was with the Spurs. So technically, Scottie Pippen was the only All-Star, really, he played with. And here's what frustrates me, and this is how you know the All-Star games mean nothing now, and they're just a gimmick. I love Chris Bosh. We're growing up, my favorite player. Yeah, I love him so much. He's a great player. He has more all-star appearances than Scottie Pippen. That's messed up. Yeah, I think that's just due to, to the time. Social, like, media, social media is a powerful yeah, thing. Yeah, and then due to the fact that people never really appreciate. If you wasn't a diehard basketball fan and knew basketball, even now, you, you game, wouldn't though, appreciate yeah. what Scottie Pippen did. His numbers yeah. weren't the f- most flattering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scottie Pippen averaged, what, like 17? Rather, 18. 19, top, 22 is his highest, but Jordan yeah, wasn't there. But he was, like, also, he was a defensive, on the on the perimeter, 
He has locked the people down. And he can take LeBron pretty good. Like, I that's what I'm saying. Like, people never – like, if you took Scottie Pippen to now, now and put him in the league today – 25-year-old Scottie Pippen. Yeah, if you took a – if you did a 24 – when he was with the Bulls when he was making them runs and stuff, if you put him in there now, he's easily a max contract player. Oh, easily. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Like, if that's all what that's what get all the defense like it goes, sure. yeah, it goes back to them saying or when we said that the NBA is full of specialists now. You yeah, know, it's, it's full of specialists and that's what everybody gets so keen into watching is specialists. I'm only gonna watch one dimension for like one part of this game. So now when people see into the in today's NBA, when a Kawhi Leonard comes along, everybody's like, What the hell? Like what just happened? What am I watching right yeah, now? Yeah, we got a guy that's a killer on both ends of the floor. Well, is Kawhi Leonard a fair comparison to Scottie Pippen? I would say so. Yeah, but like easily, I would say if you was to compare it, about like I would, I would give it to Kawhi Leonard because who's who would you who would you rather? Who? Who would you rather have? I guess it's tough to say, it's, but that's, he, that's yeah. tough because they both like, you know, Kawhi Leonard now like what I appreciate about now he can he can shoot. You know, he can he's step out. He can Brian, knock, which yeah. we talked about. He's smart in picking yeah. his brain. He can knock down the tray. He can shoot off the dribble. He can go down. He can finish. He's backing guys um, down too much. He can do too. that. But then when you come down on the end of the court, you're not having to hide him. You're not having to hide him at all and say, you know what? This team has this weak player. You guard him. You know, like, we're going to hide you. Like, you can put him on. You, If you take Kawhi Leonard, when they was playing Golden State, didn't matter who It didn't matter. He would come down and lock up Steph Curry. He would come back down and lock up Clay Thompson. Kevin Durant would have been like it was, that's just how it was, right? Like and and they had to work on both ends. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not one of them players where like, well, he's gonna come down, he's gonna be a pest on on defense. But when we get down on the offensive end, I can kinda chill because they're not looking for him to score. He can't score the ball, you know, with us. That guy's playing on both ends of the floor. Which was one of his deficits coming into the league. Yeah. But he was still okay. So I think it's just what kills it is the, like we were talking about when we was saying like you know with the, the like you say social media, with the with the media and this and that like you get a bunch of guys who the Patrick who, who played who played you know second string varsity you know junior varsity score but you know they went to school for like journalism and all that stuff and. You know, so now all of a sudden they become they they can watch a player in college and just tell, oh, he's not going to be effective in the NBA because of this and because of that. Like, dude, you wasn't effective on a high school level. <laughs> How can you sit here and try to say what professional player is going to be, what they're going to do and what they're going to be, you know, on a professional stage, you know? And then I think and what happens is you see these the first takes the different TV shows where these people are like, well, this player hasn't done this or he's doing this, and the first thing people do, right, they, they go in and, well, this person said it, or Skip Bayless said it, so it's got to be true, and then this and that, and I mean, it just, it just kills it for a lot of guys, man. Well, that, yeah, and that's not fair to compare because, like you were just saying, if you were to take a guy like Skip Bayless in his best days, how could he match up? You can't discredit at any level how high level these guys are because, okay, for you... There was not much separating you from getting to the NBA. It was just a matter of circumstance. And there's probably a lot of guys you could name off that had the same situation. And that's un- very unfortunate. But that's how the NBA is because there's a very limited amount. You can only have 15 guys in your roster. Now you can have 16. <clears throat> With a D League, it does help. But it's just not – like I really don't like that either. I don't like when guys like Skip Bayless, they don't give credit to some of these guys and they discredit. Like, yeah, it, it frustrates me because – he would never be able to keep up with them ever, ever, ever. Like that's what I'm saying. So it, like this is the thing about it. When you when you watch with you know with Ernie and Shaq and you know um, Kenny, Charles Barkley yeah. and Kenny, you know they sit there and they talk and they give credit with credit do. But Charles Barkley he goes in on players, right? He's usually right. Some of the stuff you don't like it because of the way he presents it. It's true. But it's true. And you can respect that because of the player that His Charles Barkley was. Suck, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When Shaq says something, you can kind of respect that because of what he did. Candace Smith the same way. Those are guys, you know, all but Chuck that has a championship. That's all. And, you know, Chuck was an all-star, was in the finals playing against Jordan and stuff. So he wasn't a slouch. So I think if they sit there and they say, okay, well, you know, I think this player needs to work on this, this, and this to make himself relevant in the NBA. 
I can take that verse of listening to Skip Bayless and say, well, this player needs to do this, this, and this. You know what I'm saying? To make yourself relevant. We're like, well, dude, who are you? You know, yeah, to say, yeah. you know, it, it's almost the same. Take the take the time and let it flip, right? Let's say you are, you want to become an analyst or, you know, a journalist or something like that. Then Shaq going to come to you and say, well, you need to do this, this, and this. But then here comes Skip, you know what I'm saying? Well, you need to do this, this, and this. Well, I'm going to listen to Skip, you know? That's what they do. That's, That's what their professionals are. You know what I'm saying? So, I just hate it, you know, and it's, it, it, it goes back to the, the whole AAU and the Nike and Adidas camps and stuff. It's like, now these kids are like, gets to their head. They're like juniors, you know, some seniors in high school, and they're already like, oh, he's going to be a number one pick in the 2000s, you know, and, and they get that hype. So the kid goes and has like a mediocre college, you know, year and boom, there he goes, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, well, Lonzo Ball, we'll talk about that right now. What he, like, what he's doing is hurting his kids, in my opinion, so much. I don't get it. I don't understand why he's doing it. I, I, I uh, with that, that's just uh, that's that's kind of one of the situations where he's putting the cart before the horse, right? You know, yeah. it's because his son, like, if it's me personally, like, I don't care behind closed doors. I'm like, little pop, like, no disrespect, but I kind of need you. I need you to hush, man, because. I'm the one that's going to have to go out there and dance in that fire. You know what I'm saying? Not you. You get to sit back and, you know, you have people that's like, oh, well, you know, he's this and he's that. And, you know, what's wrong with it? I'm, I'm on board. Nothing wrong with a parent wanting the best for their kids. But it's presentation. It's the way that you go about it, right? It's you don't come idiot. out and say, I want the best for my kids, so I'm going to just try to say that my kid is better than this player, better than that player. If you ask me, you know, do you think your kid is better? No. Do I think he can be better? Yeah. That's he put the work in. I think he has the potential to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the thing about it. But to come out and say, you know, oh, well, you take my kid and put him on Golden State and put Steph Curry on what's name, my kid to make Golden State better. Steph Curry was like, great in Davidson, though. Yes, he was a killer. And then He's he, a great he was, scorer. That's what I'm saying. Like, so I don't get he, but and he always had a great work ethic too. Yeah, and he took him to the oh, like to, you know what I'm saying. He took him deep into the tournament when you know when they nothing. Were, yeah, so I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, if you look at it, like you pick if you come down a court now and you see Steph Curry, what's the first thing you're thinking? Oh, we can't let him shoot the three. Yeah. So he's going to automatically open up your defense, which is going to make it easier for slashers, which is going to make it easier for everything else, right? Um. It's just, I don't, like, me personally, from what I see, like, I, I don't ever want, I never just say somebody's game is garbage or just put somebody's game down, but I think the Lonzo better. Ball, uh, I think that he has a ways to go. Does he have the potential? Yeah, but now you're going from He's playing, falling down the draft board. Yeah, it's a grown man's game, though. It's a grown man's game, though. And, and you know, it's, it's the same thing. When you get to college, they don't care what you did in high school. When you get to a professional level, they don't care what you did in college. You get what I'm saying? You got to reestablish yourself at every level. You get what I'm saying? And that's why, like, people don't like I, I, I'll ask somebody one day, like, when people talk about the LeBron, I'm like, man, what has this dude done to people that make them hate him so much? You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't give himself, he didn't come out and say in an interview from now on, I want y'all to call me King James. Not once did he say that. No, the media gave him that name. Yeah, when he stepped on the basketball court, his first game, he put up lit numbers. He and he's through. been putting up numbers ever since. But I'm like, why, you know? Guilty laugh. Like, what is it? Like, that, that, I went that, to Miami, made a super happened. team. And this, I get frustrated when I hear this. This is what frustrates me. Carl Malone didn't chase a ring when he joined Shaq and Kobe. Charles Barkley. Gary Payton tried it twice. Yeah, Charles. And he won. He got it with Miami. He got it with Miami. But Charles Barkley up and went to Houston. Yeah, they, they tried to assemble a team quick with Scotty Pippen. You had, um... Like, let's not forget yeah, these things happen. Yeah. It's just, it's, it it's an with, easier thing to expose this, them. With the Celtics, with Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett. Oh, that like, didn't just happen? Like, come on, man. Like... Kobe Bryant demanded a trade, and then all of a sudden he gets Pau Gasol and Lamar yeah. Odom as the sixth man of the year, and yeah, Ron Artest joins the team, too. But, but that's a super team. Yeah, well, you know? But you got to think about it. That guy was with them ever since he came out of high school, right? Lamar, yeah. he was with them ever since. Oh, 18 years old. He left for four years. Went to Miami. Won his championship. Vacation. And he came back and won a championship for the city. Like, why hate the dude? Well, because he's not one of his it's, many. It's, and it's, it's he like, didn't go six for six. Yeah, it's like this, though, man. I'm like, like the whole, like, one thing, him joining Golden State, Kevin Durant, like, oh, yeah, you know, 
that's a tough one to go join a team that put you out, that you was right there to be. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's a little weird to go join that team. But I'm like, at the end of the day, that dude was a free agent. He did his time there. It's not like he was leaking stuff to the media saying, oh, I'm sick of this place and none of that stuff. He, he gave y'all his best when he was there. Mm-hmm. He's entitled to go do what he wants to do. You get what I'm saying? Because, it's a business. Yeah, it's a business. Because, and that's what I try to tell people, it's a business, right? They were, you should be loyal and dedicated. So I tell you what, if he wasn't putting up the numbers, he would. It would OKC be loyal and dedicated and kept him around? No. He'd have been on the trade block every year. And they follow with a release them or something like that if he wasn't up to what they thought he should have been. So it's, it's it's that's the thing about it. Like everybody and we don't really know how he was treated. Like I'm not saying he was treated bad or anything like that, but maybe in Golden State he just likes the atmosphere and the way they have it there, man. Yeah, I, don't I mean know. it's just it's, it's the presentation of it all, right? I mean you go on the road, and that's not what you do that. You go on the road and you go to a different arena and you just feel that vibe from that home crowd. You're like, oh, I must be all right to play. Fall in love with the place, kind yeah, of. And it's just like, I mean, but the guy was there ever since he came out. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he was like, you know what? Maybe I want to just go see what it's like somewhere else. You know, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that at all? No, 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 no. He's a free agent. They he didn't have room. He didn't go in and say, you know what? I want to trade. I demand a trade. Or I hate this place and that. He went professional about it. You know? I tell you what, if Golden State don't beat them, is everybody complaining about him? Yeah, leaving? Russell Westbrook does quadruple double every game and. Like tears it. everyone's ass apart, and somehow the Oklahoma City Thunder beat Golden State to get to the finals, let's say. No, what does everyone start doing? But I'm even saying this, though. Like, when they went out last year, it was Golden State that put them out. Mm-hmm. OKC had the 3-1 lead. They wound up chalking it up to Golden State. Weird. But if it wasn't Golden State that beat them, you get what I'm saying? Or if it was another team. If they win, or do you if think they, Kevin or if they do beat them. No, if they do beat them, and it's a free agent, he say, you know what? I'm going to go to Golden State. Is everybody saying, oh, that's a terrible thing to do? Why would you go to the team you beat? Yeah, why would you go to the team you beat? Why would you, like, would it be that thing? So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. That's what it is. So at the end of the day, you just do whatever makes you happy, right? Because no matter what you do, somebody's going to have something to say. You line 10 people up and you tell them, look, you know, I'm thinking about staying. And then you tell them, I'm thinking about going. You're going to have probably half of them going to be like, sure, I'll go. You're going to probably have half of them that's going to say. Why are you leaving? So no matter what happened, people are going to have yeah. something to say. Do Alan Iverson had it this way. He's like, I'm, a million people will love me, a billion people will hate me. Exactly, man. You can't live your life, especially in sports. Like, you just, you, you can't you can't worry about what people say. You can't worry about what people Even when the big guy from upstairs or whatnot come down and say, you know what? You know, it's this and it's that and it's this and it's that. You still have to go out on that court and you have to do what you do, right? And it's just, like, people don't understand that side of it at all. Well, yeah, and I, so we're, speaking on the other side of it, we're going to talk about players who we think, I'm going to give you four players, give you a little resume on them, and we're going to list off who you think is going to get overpaid, who's going to get a max contract, and who you think is going to get underpaid but still going to be good value. So we're going to start with Jeff Teague. I'll list them up. Jeff Teague, Drew Holiday, Otto Porter, Dion Waiters. So we're going to start with Jeff Teague. He's got the best resume so far. He's 28 years old. He's the oldest. He's got 15.3 points per game last year, 7.8 assists, 1.2 steals, field goal percentage 44%, 82 games played. His three-point percentage was 35%, four rebounds a game, and he has an all-star appearance back in 2005, the most recent of the four. Drew Holiday played 67 games last year, uh, this past season, I should say. Uh, 15.4 assi- 15.4 points per game, 6.2 assists, 1.2 steals, field goal percentage the same at 44%, 36% from three, 3.6 rebounds, an all-star appearance in 2013 with the Sixers. Otto Porter is 23 years old, plays for the Warrior, uh, the Wizards, sorry. Played 80 games this year, 13.4 points per game, one and a half assists, one and a half steals, 51% field goal, 43% from three, and 4.4 assists, uh, 4.4 rebounds. Jesus uh, <laughs> and we got Dion Waiters at 15.8 points per game, uh, four assists, three rebounds, just under a steal at 0.9, and we got field goal percentage at 42%, and his three point percentage at 39%. Out of that group, I think the two that will get overpaid is going to be Wade and Porter. Wade like, and Porter? Yeah, I think those are the two that will be, like, overpaid. You know, just 
Because you got to think at those positions, right? Waiters like, only played forty six games this year. Yeah, but you got to look at the um, the the positions as well, right? Like you, you just had uh, Portland that came in and gave Evan Turner like seven four seventy five million, you know, <laughs> yeah. and he didn't put up nowhere near those numbers. <laughs> and the same thing with you know with waiters or whatnot. You got like with Alex, like with Alex, right. Alex. Alex. like so they're gonna get paid. You know, sure. those positions. Because it's like it, now it's not so much. You think about it. You're looking in at the two spot, the three spot. Other than LeBron, um, Giannis, uh, I say DeMar DeRozan, um, Bradley Bill. You got like a handful that's like legit killers at that two Clay Thompson. Three spot. Clay Thompson. You know, like at that two or three spot, McCollum. You know that. Melo still a killer. Yeah, I think it is. It's just it's not the right situation. It's just not in the right situation. I think is he's more effective, but um, but I think um, Holiday and T um, they'll get nice contracts, but it just depends on Jeff T's my pick. I think yeah. Jeff T's got the best resume. He's got he's a solid pro in my opinion. Drew Holiday is an interesting circumstance. He, he didn't miss games because of injury. He missed games because his wife had yeah. she was had cancer. She had like cancer. That, so yeah. He just decided to. I mean, you have to respect that. So Which it's not, is perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, but he came in and he, and he put his work in, right? Like, he came in from, like, like, that's tough. Like, he didn't go to, I don't think he went to training camps. He was none no. of that stuff. And then it's like, Drew Holiday's so his back. This is like the biggest yeah, question mark, like, like, in like, a good way. Yeah, like, okay, Holiday's back. When you put him out there, he's boom. Like, he didn't mess up the, the chemistry. The Pelicans were a completely different team. Yeah, he didn't mess a better up, way. Yeah, he didn't mess up the chemistry. None of that stuff. Like, oh, that's be, like that is hard to do. Like, and he's been a true professional. Like that's always been a big compliment on him too. Whenever you see like resumes on him or like coaching and scouting reports, like talking about how good, like he's always been a good locker room guy. He's not bad to have around. That's how it, that I mean? think those two, Drew Holiday and Jeff T, are the best value for you. I think I think Drew Holiday is going to get a little underpaid just because they're going to see the 67 games. I think they might look past it because of the whole situation with his wife and his newborn son. I believe I could be incorrect on that one. And yeah, that's my opinion. Anyways. Yeah, like they'll get their contract. Like you say, Holiday, yeah, he might get a little underpaid because of that. But, I mean, it just depends on the organization, right? It depends on who's, who's, you know, preparing to cut that check to look at it and say, okay, well, he didn't miss 67 games because he was injured or anything like that. Like, or contract you know, negotiations. You know, any, any man knows that, you know. Family comes family, first. You, you have your family, especially in situations like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't get mad at you or knock you for saying, you know what, like, hey, I got this situation. Going and he said the Pelicans way. were very nice to him, too. They handled it very well. Yeah. So do you, like, that's where I'm wondering if he wants to throw him a bone and yeah, kind of stay. You, yeah, because you never heard, even through all that, you never heard his name come up on trade or anything. You never, never heard his name come up never. on nothing. You know what I'm saying? And he, that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty rare. Yeah, so. I mean, actually happened. Yeah. Yeah, he could, because I'm pretty sure they've tried to go after somebody. You even mean, when they did trade, like, he, his name, I don't, like, his name never came up when they traded Buddy he and all them to Sam yeah, well, I doubt, I doubt they got brought up in negotiations. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. You know, it went in, but, like, that's, that speaks volumes to that organization as well, right? Like, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 organization like that is hard to come by, but, um, the Spurs, you know, that's why people get in with the Spurs and they there, you know, like, you, you, you don't like, mind, yeah. You like, Danny mind. Green, for yeah, instance, like, when he took that contract. Yeah, you like, do like, okay, you know, they offer me, you know, they offer me, you know, 44 over four years. Well, the Sixers offered him a damn near max contract, and he took a four-year, forty million. And they're like, yeah. "What are you doing? Why'd you do that?" The Sixers were going to offer you almost double. And he's like, ah, "I like it playing for the Sixers." Yeah, you like it then. Like it was, it's probably the and it was a flat rate yeah. too. Usually you go two percent, two point five percent up each year. And they know, like they, you know, what I'm saying they know what they're going to get out of him. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying he knows what his job is on, on the thing. Like if you take him and put him in with the Sixers, man, they probably try to have him oh, create yeah. shots off the dribble. Even yeah. if they want him to just play his game, it's not the same. Yeah. He doesn't have the and same then, yeah. atmosphere. And then what here. happens then is, you know, it doesn't pan out for a year, year and a half, maybe two. And then into that contract, they're trying to ship it out. Oh, you know, no, he's just not producing the way he thought he was going to help him out. This and that. You can see portrayed as a terrible yeah, last time to cut ties. And like I said, it just depends on what the media want to feed out of it, right? Like, you know, that guy, you know, he seems like a good dude to me, you know, from, you know, just seeing on TV interviews, stuff like that. But, you know, how do we get him out of here? He's a twist. Yeah, how do we get him? Yeah, we can just say he's a bad guy in the locker room and just 
practice and that stuff. And now he's he's looking at him and he's like, okay, he was with the Spurs and he was going to be there. Now you look at him in that four years and he got bounced around in two or three different teams, you know. Potentially, yeah, in a bad situation. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, Yeah, so what we're going to talk about next is, and I know know you love the Raptors, Elvin, oh boy. Uh, This stupid website called thesportster.com. They're saying how Raptors players, they need to chase and they need to avoid Elvin, oh boy. So they're saying the Raptors need to chase Kyle Lowry. So, here's where they are very, very, very wrong. Kyle Lowry needs to go. We'll take the money we're going to save on him, spend it on keeping Ibaka around. Ibaka can play our four or five for us. We need to develop Norman Powell, who you really like, and I like too. Norman Powell and DeMar DeRozan need to try and develop into their point guard situation, into a point guard player, in my opinion. In my opinion, you can tell me what you think in a sec. I think it would help DeRozan a lot more if they avoid using him as a three. I think he's too undersized at the three. I think Norman Powell is a perfect explosive type player. We've discussed this before. He's a ex- perfect explosive type player to get to the basket. The shooting is still pretty good. Corey Joseph is no slouch either at the one. He's won a championship with the Spurs. He's 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 good. He's good enough to win us. I don't know if he's good enough to win us a championship, but I think Kyle Lowry's done enough that we can see it's not going to be enough to win a championship with him, in my opinion. I think Kyle Lowry with his inconsistencies in the playoffs. I'd rather I'd rather take 12 points a game consistently from Corey Joseph than 22 points one game, 6 points another game, 22 points another game, 6 points another game. It's, it's too hard to predict. I think that's the route I think they should go. I think they need to focus on Lowry. I think they need to focus on Larry leaving. I think they need to focus on DeRozan being the focal point of the team 100%. And I think Ibaka needs to be a focal point. Carroll needs to get traded or I don't know what the hell you do there because you're not going to get a good value for him. But I'd try to do whatever the heck they can do. And Valanchunas as well. I think Valanchunas' time is, is gone. I think they need to just part ways with him and try to get either an athletic center to try and bring in, because they do have a draft pick, so they can try and do something there. They can try and package maybe Valanchunas in the draft pick, because the draft pick is just potential in my idea. I think you should just I don't know, trade some of those away unless you got a surefire pick. What mm-hmm. do you think? Um, as far as the chase and the Kyle Lowry, um, I don't agree with that at all. Um, as far as the past three years, it's been yes. the same thing. Get to the playoffs, disappear. Get to the playoffs, disappear. Have a good game or two here and there, which is going to happen. But and it's the thing about it, like he never just comes ready to play. Uh, with me, is even like his body language with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like oh, you love describing him. Yeah, it's just yeah. seriously, man. It's like his body language. It's, it's like he, like you know what? If we win, fine. If we don't. You know, like, well, like you were saying, all you got to do is just kind of bump him a bit, and as soon as he throws his hands up, you know you've got he's him. done. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, you, like, you see him go in, he's trying to initiate the contact, the referee don't call the foul, he's laying on the floor with his hands up, like, where's the foul? Other team got the rebound, they're gone. You know, and, like, I mean, yeah, he's a two-time, a two-time all-star and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but that's no reason to chase. Like you said, you have, you got Corey Joseph, who's played in the Spurs system, won a championship in the Spurs system. He's playing under Pop. He's played under Tony Parker. So he knows how to run a team. And I, but I think you keep the roles in that too. And you try to teach Norman Powell how to play a little more. What you do you know? do with the just strictly the two? Yeah, you can utilize this too. It's not, it depends on if a team goes small, he can play the three. You play a team like, you know, with a small or one, two, or three, you know what I'm saying? He can play the three. Even if they got a team where the three like is Like the Celtics, not, Southern's a little smaller. Yeah, if you ever have a team where the three is not like a dominant look in the score, he can play the three then. But True. you keep him at that two, you know what I'm saying? Because once you start trying to move him at the three, you just you put a little more physicality on the game. But What do you think moving him to the one does to him? Like, you think it takes the, away from his shooting? No, ability? I think moving him to the one, personally, is not really a good, that wouldn't be a good idea, right? Because now you... With him, he's that guy that you can get the ball to. He'll get you something. He's going to get you a quick something, but you don't want the ball to start out just dominantly in his hand. And That's then not he the type of play off And then come back and get it and stuff like that. But um, So why Norman Powell then? I, was, I just like Norman Powell. Like Norman Powell, he looks like he can be a... Um, he, can, he can be a dominant. Like he can Sorry about that. There's just some minor construction going on around my apartment. Anyways, we were talking about Norman Powell transitioning to be a point guard. You were saying all this. Yeah, I, would, I think that would be a good move because um, Norman Powell's a real aggressive player, right? So when you play against teams that doesn't have those real good on-ball defenders like a point guard, 
I think you can put them out there and he can match the flow because he's a relatively fast enough to get past him. He can get in the paint and then, you know, draw a double team, pick the ball off to a shooter, um, get it to a big man in a good spot to just go up and shoot. So uh, before moving the rose to the three, I would definitely, you know, play with trying to move Norman Powell over to the one, to play the one side. But um, you still, like I said, you have players that will put you out the long right. So to try to get a, a nice bet point guard in and doesn't break your bank. Mario Chalmers and Jameer yeah, Nelson. Jameer yeah, Nelson. Like doesn't break your bank, I think, because, I mean, when you have the rolls in and you're trying to take money to ink the pocket, like, you really don't need to be trying to look for a lot of scoring out of the point. I think DeLon Wright deserves a chance at the one, too, doesn't he, back up. I think he needs some grooming, but I think he deserves a chance. Yeah. DeLon Carroll, I say, you know, maybe you know, whatever we're doing, like, if they did it at a workout. Yeah, I would, if I'm honest, if I'm them, I'm, I'm talking to Denver. You know, <laughs> like for real, you're making the money that you would save with Kyle Lowry, possibly Ink Abaka. You know, you still have a little money left over. I would go talk to Denver for like Wilson Chandler or somebody like that to come mm-hmm. in to be the start or the backup Tucker in the three. I'm keeping Tucker. Like, oh, yeah, you got to keep Tucker. Gotta I, keep I believe him. Wilson Chandler, is he a free agent? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he wants I think he might be, actually. That's I think a, he's a free agent. Yeah, that's a guy like that. Jeff Green, somebody like that that you can you can go in and, and get something out of. Like why um, can Johnny Green Earth they trade or let go, let James Johnson go? It's still He must have just still, said, I don't know. It's still baffling to me, man. Like, I'm trying I'm gonna probably part ways with Patrick Patterson too. Like, you know, yeah, I think it's time's coming. Like, I'm just not a big fan of it, man. Because so, mm-hmm. it just pick and pop, pick and pop, pick and pop, you know, and it's just I don't see him doing any kind of back to the basket moves, you know, anything off the dribble. Just pick if the shot ain't done, shot fake, pass it, go look for pick. Yeah, you've never, you never spoken highly of him, to be honest. I've never, yeah, I've never heard you say, oh man, Patrick Patterson, that guy can really do something like well, this. I mean, that's just if they want to be serious and they want to, you know, try to beat this Cavs team that they say, you know, will run in the long run the East as long as LeBron's there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to. Yeah, I think Wilson Chandler's still under contract though. It's yeah. seven point four million bucks too. That's a steal and a half. Exactly, man. Like, I don't know. Man. Yeah. Just, like you try to go after players like that. Like you, you mean to tell me he wasn't available when they moved to Norman Carroll? Yeah, I know. I, know. Just, I never when they signed him, I was like, okay, that guy. And they're saying another one they need to avoid the in the sportster.com. Jesus. They're saying avoid a Baca. Why? This guy did nothing but good things yeah. for you. He turned your defense around in the second half of the season. So what reason did they give? Stepped up as a leader him. too. Like what reason to avoid him? Because he can, you can go to him. He can post. Is that a case in the media trying to draw his money down? I don't know. You know what I mean? You can, he can post on offense. He can play the post. Yeah. He can step out and shoot a fifteen footer. He can shoot he the three. Shoot okay. The three. He's gonna. He's a gritty player. He's he's good on ball defender and off the ball defender. You know what I'm saying? So why? Like, you've never had that before in the post. You didn't have that prior to him coming there. Like, guys are just going down and down the like he was five, six, five, no seven. Like, when nobody yeah. worried about him. You know what I'm saying? So, like, avoid him. Like, I have to have a legit reason of why. He was stepping up in the playoffs, too. Him and P.J. Tucker, which is why you need to keep him. They call the players only meeting. meeting. These are guys who just got traded to the team, not even playing six months for him, not even playing a month. Well, more than a month. But anyways. Then they're saying, look, we need to step up our grit. We need to be tough. We need to take it out of this Bucks team. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, I think we need to. Like, yeah. Kyle Lowry and DeRozan need to be doing that. But DeRozan is kind of a quiet person. And I don't know how, if anyone's listening to Kyle Lowry anymore then. No, it's like from an uh, athletic or athlete standpoint, like, I can't constantly listen to you and go out on the battlefield with you when I know that when stuff is not going well, you know what I'm saying, you just want to chunk me the deuces and leave me out in a battle of my own. And that's pretty much what I've seen from Kyle Lowry. Like, you know, everybody don't want to say, oh, he was hurt, he played good for his wrist and stuff. And, like, trust me, I know about playing with injuries and drugs. But you have to bring something. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to come out there and you have to bring something. At that point, I feel like there's no way that, you know, you should be a two-time All-Star and these people consider you max player deal. Meanwhile, your younger players are having to pull you to the side and try to constantly pep talk you and all this and that stuff. I'm like, I just, I don't see it. I don't, you know. Well, another thing they're saying is, 
they're saying that you, we need to go with, we need to go after Gordon Hayward, and I'm like, well, duh. But I don't think Gordon Hayward's leaving Utah. Well, I feel like I have that money grab, but, I mean, he's going to, Gordon Hayward's going to have a lot of teams coming at him. He's going to have a lot of teams kind of at him that's in position to add him and be contenders, like serious contenders. But Utah's not that far away, in my opinion. Yeah, they're not, but it depends on what they make, what moves they make in this offseason as well, right? I mean, of sure. course, they got him, they got Rudy Gobert or whatnot. It depends on the, the other pieces around them, right? You know, they well, don't. Derek Favors had an injury that they, yeah, that like if they don't knee injury, I believe. Yeah, so if they don't keep the pieces around them, then even that West too, he's back out there. He's Utah, Utah, he's right? back out there in Utah, and he's not really doing too much, right? So I don't think he goes to Boston, though. I don't, to be honest with you. No, I don't see him not to Boston. Like I said, with the whole Boston thing, Miami just got a lot of money available too, right? And they mm-hmm. were saying that they were going to go after him, but. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's true. I read the other day too. Some it was what team was it? They said it was uh, preparing to offer Dion Waiters a nice chunk of change. The Sixers. Uh, it was one of the teams they were saying they were ready to offer him a nice. He's from Philadelphia. Team. Yeah. So they were saying that Miami was kind of worried about that, but yeah. Because I think at that, I, I think out there in Miami, if you got Gordon George, if you have like, um. Or Gordon Hayward and then a James Johnson out there. That's pretty good. That's tough. That, that is. And the Hassan Whiteside. And Hassan Whiteside ain't no yeah, stuff. And then you, buy, you go and just get yourself a nice, solid corner. Like, I feel like that helps out a lot. Man, it's very unfortunate what's happened to Chris Bosch. Hopefully, he does figure it out, but it's not looking too good yeah. for him right now. Yeah, with the doctor said it was still there. And it's all. It's n- yeah, no, it's not looking good. Yeah. They're saying. The Raptors need to go after Danilo Gallinari. No offense. I think he's injury prone. I think he has a hard time staying healthy, and I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, that might, that might help you after three. That, if he, like you said, if he can stay healthy. Because you can go to him and he can score the ball. He also can pass it very well, too. So that'll help out. Yeah, that'll no, help out of no, that three spot. But like I said, it's just with me, the only thing with him is just boils down to the health of him. Like, is he able to, to give me a good 70 for games? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's so yeah, let's hope for that. I don't I don't think so though. And they're saying Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler, I don't know if Chicago's gonna want to part ways with him because he's still under well, contract. Yeah, but, but who are they gonna give up for Jimmy Butler? <clears throat> well, it has to like in a perfect scenario, you could do Kyle Lowry and sign and trade, but nah, I doubt they'll do that. Uh, I, I don't I don't see them. Uh, nah, Jimmy Butler with that. You know, that's that's two young all stars, right? That, that would be good for the Raptors, though. Yeah. yeah. I just don't see Chicago parting ways. If if Rajon Rondo plays for the Bulls and is healthy, uh, man, I don't know. That was a different series. Yeah, I know. It was a very different series. Like, I mean, because the Bulls had the momentum, right? Like, they, they took it and they had that. They weren't phased by Boston at all. Not at all. And like I say, Rondo, they didn't, after that, they didn't really have a good, you know, facilitator to come down and, and keep the keep the offense on the way. And the Bulls have a team option so they can run it back next year. Yeah. But do the Miami Heat, <clears throat> they're saying avoid Dwayne Wade. I don't know. That's a question mark. I don't know what to do with that one. Does the Miami Heat, though, try to bring Dwayne Wade back? I know Pat Riley was kind of felt really bad with how the, th- how the way things went. I mean, I don't know if that's... I mean, you're going to get what you're going to get from Wade at this point, right? Like, he's still average, like, 519. Yeah, it was just under 20 points yeah, a game. Uh, which was nothing. So, I mean, it's a lot of guys making 100 million now that's, that's average of, you know, it's true. 17, 18 a game. So, I mean, you can go to him. He's not going to be that flash that they used to see in Miami. You know, like, he's not going to be that way. But I think just having him on your team, a healthy on your team right now, you know, can really make up for a lot, you know, with the basketball IQ the veteran presence in the locker room and at the practice it'll make it a closer job a whole lot easier I know that for a fact so. yeah true I think I think the Raptors need to bring back Vince Carter I think Vince Carter needs to come back to Toronto I hope he does I mean it would really bring everything full circle I think he would be the veteran that could really help us too because he was still pretty effective while he was in Dallas, yeah, uh, Dallas and now he's in Memphis what would he average in, in Memphis just around uh, just under 9 points a game but still effective 40 years old though. you know what I'm saying like, still very effective yeah, why not go after Vince Carter? Let him come in, let him finish his career out where he started. And then retire his number, obviously. Yeah, like, 
could run. And then, like you said, you could still help your team out. Like, you could still come off that bench and help your team out, you know. And, like, I don't know what it's, they were saying. Avoid them or go after them. No, that's in my opinion. Oh, I think okay. this is someone they should have been putting in there. I think they should have said, look, I think a guy like Vince Carter needs to get brought back. I don't know why they're looking past it. But, yeah. Uh, and they said Blake Griffin, but duh. Yeah, but I don't know if Blake Griffin wants to come to Toronto. I don't know. What, yeah, yeah. He's going to have some good offers from some better teams, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like better teams, like who? Uh, I don't know, man. I wonder if like if the Spurs go after him because they got Pau Gasol leaving. If the Spurs take Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, that could be something. I don't yeah, know. Or he, does he stay in Los Angeles? But do you turn around and say, okay, the market's up and we need you to play the five? Mm-hmm. Put Blake Griffin at the four? Yeah. That'll be that'll be interesting to just see how that will work out. I get I would give it a shot. I don't know. I think well, just easy to put anyone with the Spurs to be honest with you. But everyone's also getting cap increased too, right? Yeah. This is the last time it happens. Yeah, could be uh, could be interesting. If he came to Toronto, that'd be awesome for us. If you put Ibaka and Blake Griffin together, jeez, that would be perfect. Yeah, that's a good but yeah, I don't know. I just I don't think the Raptors will be able to make that move. I wish. I don't. I don't know. It's easier said than done on our end. Yeah. Uh, next, we're going to talk about. Just CJ McCollum saying how Clay Thompson might be leaving because he's to the free agency stuff for now. I, I don't know. I, I don't see CJ. I, I don't know where CJ McCollum is getting this Wait. saying that Clay Thompson's going to leave. This was after game one where Clay Thompson didn't play well. Yeah, but he still has another two years, right? Uh, Signed until 18 19. Yeah, so he still has another couple of years left. But I think the last year is a player's option, too, right? So yeah. He's not going nowhere in the last one, man. Like, unless they just completely. This and all that Golden State team, which I doubt they'll do, because he's not going nowhere in the last one. True, I'm true. Yeah, I, don't know. I just, uh, yeah. I just, I don't know where he's getting this from. And then, what did you, what's your opinion on here? Do you know what Glenn Davis said about Austin Rivers? Uh, yeah. So I saw Austin that. Rivers was saying how Glenn Davis would show up to practice late and was out of shape. Yeah. And he was just, I seen when he went in on Austin Rivers and said. Basically, your daddy gave you your money, like, your trash and all that stuff. I saw all that, but this is some stuff that just be left alone, you know? So, if if I'm sitting at an interview, and let's say you were my teammate, and you're no longer my teammate, and they were going, so what was he been like? You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, he come to practice late, he was always out of shape. Like, I'm not going to say all that. Yeah, like, where does that come from? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, man. Like, it just, it just... It's, it's like, to me, I think it's a way of what we would call, like, more so of a dry snitch, right? Like, I'm going to tell y'all the dirt without trying to make it look like I'm telling you the dirt. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. dude, like, because I'm pretty sure they didn't come out and say, was he late? Was he out of shape? Was he this and that? You know, like, it's, it's always a way that you can go about stuff, you know? Because you got to think about when you're dealing with the media, when you say something, it's going to be, you know, five times. If it's bad, it's going to be 10 times worse. <laughs> yeah, they're going to blow it up. Good, they're going to blow it up one way or the other, right? So they, they dictate what you say, the impact that they want it to have, right? And that's just how it is. Like some certain Glenn stuff. Davis you, wasn't having it, though. <laughs> certain, stuff, you, certain stuff, you just dance around. You know, they come to me. I don't care if he was out of shape. Like, did Ethan come to practice out of shape? Uh, like, you know, we all did. You, know, you just say something. You yeah, know, like, like we, all, yeah. we all came in out of shape a little bit. You know, that's why it's training camp. That's why it's this and that. You know, just, that's how it is. It is. But, you know, I seen where he came back at him and was just going off on him. I was like, wow. Glenn <laughs> Davis isn't there anymore. I'm going to give a book. Um, my next question will be then, we're going to transition to the MBLC finals, your former league. The London Lightning won last night. They're looking pretty good. They're up, uh, they're looking to try to win tonight, actually. They're up three games to two. Yeah, they're up three two, and they're playing here in London tonight. They're trying to go to that game, yeah. So it'll be a good game tonight, you know. Like I said, they've been the dominant team, like the, the best record, you know, ever team the entire season. So, um, you know, they got the next two there anyway. So I say I'm winning it. You know, you know. Oh, those two, three, two. Yeah, um, I say I'm winning it tonight. It's, you know, if not tonight, then I think they play tomorrow. It'll be the back to back. So. Oh, oh, yeah, true. So yeah, it's, um, but yeah, I think like I said last time. How do you how do you 
approach Royce White after he gets the one game suspension for throwing the ball into the stands? How do you approach him? Yeah, like, what do you do? With him? Like, it's, it's certain stuff you address. That's just his own problem? Certain stuff you address, right? Certain stuff just don't need to be said, you know, when it comes to that. You don't go to him in the locker room. Like, hey, you don't throw the ball in the stands. Well, of course, he knows he's thrown it, but he gets caught in that moment and it, and it, and it happens, you know? Like, we all. Do you just stuff. joke about it afterwards, kind of? Yeah, like, damn, right? Yeah, like, man, what was you thinking? You know, <laughs> like, did you see the six man up there? Because apparently, he threw, you know, he threw it in like an area where nobody was at, right? So it's not like he threw it and hit somebody or something like that. But, you know, you just, you know, you make a little joke out of it. You kind of take the bad with the good and you keep on going. You can't sit there and just drop your head and be like, oh, what are we going to do now? And, mm. you know, I'm pretty sure, and I think the game they didn't have him there after they wound up losing. But, yeah, they did, I mean, yeah. yeah, but you don't, you know, you, you know, you, you, you can't come in and say, it's your fault we lost. It, you, no. know, you can't do none of that stuff either, right? So, I mean, you go in and you make light of it. And, and if anything, you'd be like, you know what, man, we're going to go out and get this one for you. You know what I'm saying? And just let it be like that. But, I think that's, that's funny. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And what do you? what about Anthony Criswell, how we went into the stands? That's kind of annoying. We got yeah. 10 games for that one. Yeah, I didn't see it. You know, but, I mean, you look on the on their Facebook page and stuff, you see a lot of people talking about I mean, it's just, it's a fine line. People don't understand. Like, you're a professional athlete and you're paid to do what you do. But you have some of these fans that think that they can talk to you and say whatever they want yeah, to. Yeah, let's talk about that. You know, it's just yeah. like with me, man. Like, if you want to tell me I suck and I'm garbage and I'm missing that all day, fine. You're going to hear that, yeah. You're going to hear that. That's just, that's what's going to happen. But, like, you know, even after the game, when it's all said and done, you have nothing to distract you from it. It's not like I'm at the free throw line shooting. It's not none of that. I'm walking in the tunnel to, you know, go to the locker room. We had a little bit of draw. You know, you don't have to lean over in my face or you don't have to, you know, get personal with the stuff. And people, like, all the time, they're like, oh, they're professional athletes. They're this and that. But, yeah. You're still human beings. We're humans that are just happen to be good at a certain sport. You get what I'm saying? Like, still get angry. Yeah. yeah, you still get angry. You still lose it. You're like, still don't want to be calling like you an I, asshole. Like, I recall when we was in... When we was in Oklahoma, true mm-hmm. story, we were sitting on the bench. We was playing in Rochester, New York. We were sitting on the bench. All of a sudden, we hear something clink, like hitting the back of the chair. So we look, and I'm thinking it's one of the teammates playing around. We look. It's a guy sitting in, like, the front row because their arena was, like, kind of like a hockey-style seat. So the guy was sitting kind of, like, behind, like, what would, I guess would be, like, a little side there. So he's sitting there, and he's throwing, like, pennies. So we tell the usher, like, yo, this dude is throwing pennies. Like, we have to be here. So, like, y'all got to do something about this dude. So they take him and move him in, like, another section. So, you know, Michael Ray and the Michael referees, they get into, a, you know, a little job job. And they give him two texts, they kick him out. Oh, shit. The game like, fine. He's going to the locker room. This same guy leans over and throws, like, a half-empty water bottle and hits him in the head with it. And do we lose it? Like the whole team. Like we're trying to get over in the stands now. You know, and they like, oh, this team is like and that classless. Avoided. This team is classless. They need to be. I'm like, dude, we have to be here. So we can't be out here doing our job and we worried about and y'all letting people throw stuff. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let people throw water bottles. They throwing pennies and all this yeah. and that stuff. Like, what do you think is gonna happen? You know, I don't care how professional you are. If you're doing something, I lean over and hit you in your head with a water bottle. You were going to react. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. You're going to retaliate. That's just how it is, right? So, and everybody's like, you know, and it's, and it's the same thing when you hear people saying, like, professional athletes. And you hear it a lot here. You know, all oh, these are professional. Like, this and that happened. He's a professional athlete. He should carry himself a certain way. He's a role model to kids and this and that. And I'm like, understandable. I can understand mm-hmm. what kids say, hey, you know what? This is my favorite player. I like this player. I want to be like this player, whatever it may be. But I'm like, you know what? If you have a 11, 12-year-old kid that you've raised for 11 or 12 years, and I can come in for six months and have more of an impact on his life than you, it seems to me like you kind of fell on a little bit as a parent when it comes to that, you know? And it's just... I, I don't, that's one thing I don't like about it and I didn't like about it is like when it comes to that part of it, like the expectation for people, like they expect you to just take everything and just take and take and take, they, you know, from the media, 
scale from the fans. You can take the heckling. That's a part of it. You know, you go some places, the heckling is all good and fun. It's clean after the game. If you, yeah, it's not bad. It's, if you it's win, okay to work If with, you yeah. win, the, the fans will shake your hand and like, we'll get you next time. Yeah, it was a good game, yeah. But you go some places and the people literally, like, it's out of control blood. with it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, whenever you get to the point where you're like, you know, if you want to go at me, go at me. If I'm married with a wife and kids, keep my wife and kids and stuff out of it. You know what I'm saying? Did like, you ever hear stuff like that? Or? Who? God, like, you hear, I mean, man, you hear some personally stuff. Personally? Like, no, nah, not me personally, but you hear some stuff, man. And you just like, you know, it's... You shake your head, eh? Yeah, you just kind of shake your head. Because you're like, what is this person proving? You know what I'm saying? Like... If what the, the hell's dude, happened the, to you, man? Yeah, if, the dude, if the guy comes in the stands at you, what are you going to do? Y'all are just going to try to say, you know what? He shouldn't have came in the stands. Y'all not going to say, this guy shouldn't have provoked him this other way. What happened to get to that point? Yeah, man. Like, you, don't, you know, it's like it's always, you know, you have to keep your head. You have to this and that. And I'm like, dude, at the end of the day, we're people. You know what I'm saying? We're humans just like everybody else. You know, so if I turn around and go to your job and do the same thing. You're going to go right to your supervisor. Yeah, they're going to put me out and they're going to say how I shouldn't do that. I'm going to be such a bad person, but you can come to me and mine and you can do that, right? Part of the jam. Yeah. What were some of the places you actually like visiting around here? Like, what were some of the uh, towns and areas you didn't mind going to? Here? Mm -hmm. No, when I was here. In this league. In this league. I mean, you had like um, St. John. That was, they had a nice little, uh, I always had a nice little. You like the fans there? Yeah, for a while you had um, Halifax. They used to have, I don't know, now I haven't been in a couple of years, but they used to have a nice little crowd. Um, Windsor. Windsor, London's right away, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, and, they're always pretty decent, yeah. Yeah, and when um, Brampton, when they moved to Orangeville or whatnot, they was right down in, you know, Brampton, they had a nice little, it wasn't a real big, like it wasn't like the garden, but it was a nice. Nice setup. Nice little setup. So I liked it there. So. True. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Well, I think we're going to leave it there. Well, shout out to everyone watching on Gizmo TV. Uh, shout out to my boy, Kev. Uh, we're soon going to be putting up some music of his on our uh, podcast. It'll be a thing, hopefully, in the next week or so. Uh, shout out to our official sponsor, too, Perennial Landscaping. If you have any questions, also, you can email us at thehoopintheharm at gmail.com. Uh, anything you want to say, Alan? Well, no, I just kind of... Have fun and having these discussions. Um, pretty sure we got a lot more hot 